First up is Trevor Grace. I am not afraid of an army of lions led by a sheep. I am afraid of an army of sheep led by a lion. Fear and uncertainty never bothered me. It seemed I was destined for greatness from my beginning. Born as the son of a king, it seemed I was destined for greatness from my beginning. It was whispered by many that Zeus, not King Philip II of Macedonia, was my father. Nevertheless, I was raised as a prince of Macedonia and grew up in the king's court experiencing all that this entailed. Tutored by Aristotle at age 13, I was a bright and confident boy. An example of this overwhelming confidence first emerged when I met my father I contained the untamable horse, Bucephalus. The king's best horsemen were unable to tame the black stallion. But I saw something unusual that everyone else overlooked. Bucephalus was afraid of his own shadow. King Philip was about to send the horse away when I implored him to allow me a chance to tame Bucephalus. Turning Bucephalus toward the sun, I hopped onto his back and rode him without fear. Bucephalus became my close companion and I would lead him into battle many times. One day he even made me a city after my beloved horse. Another example of my extraordinary intelligence was displayed when I conquered the puzzle of the Gordian Knot. Legend <coughs> said, whoever could release the knot would become ruler of all Asia. Many had attempted to untie the knot, but had failed. I studied the knot, then took my sword and sliced it in half. I conquered the knot in much of Asia. Between age 20 and 31, I had conquered much of the known world. My biggest conquest was Persia and the defeat of King Darius III. Many cities were named after me, such as Alexandria, Egypt, which is now the second biggest city in that country. I was very interested in other cultures and races of people. My death remains a mystery. Some say I died of a fever, others have said I died of battle wounds, and others have suggested I may have been poisoned by someone close to me. While this mystery will remain unsolved, it is clear that I was the most influential general and king of all time, influencing other great generals like Hannibal, Julius Caesar, Napoleon, and many others. Because of me, Greek and Macedonian influence was felt all over the ancient world. Had it not been for my unexpected, untimely, and unfortunate death, I would have undoubtedly conquered the world. Oh, thank you, yeah, thank you. I would rather be the first man in a humble village than the second man in Rome. No truer words were ever spoken by me. I was a man of great passion persuasion and power. My tumultuous rise to power forever left its mark on Rome and the history of the world, as did my violent and untimely death. I was born July 12, 100 BC, to a very influential Roman family. My uncle, Gaius Marius, was well loved by the people because he helped the less fortunate and believed soldiers should own land. Sola, who was a powerful general, also wanted to rule Rome, but knew the people loved Gaius Marius. Because of each man's ambition to rule Rome, a civil war broke out between the two factions of Gaius Marius and Sulla. Gaius Marius won the war, but died in 86 BC. His close friends remained in power, though, which proved fortunate for me. I, w I was 15 years old, high priest of Jupiter, and head of my household. This was an excellent position to begin my launch into power. So, unfortunately, Sola returned to Rome and murdered my friends who were in power. I lost my lands, my houses, my money, and almost my life. Had it not been for an old alliance between my mother and Sola, I would have been killed. I was exiled for seven years. The only thing I could do was join the Roman army. 
so I did. I was I was already a well-trained soldier and believe and excelled at leadership and training. I was I was brash and clever, but clever. I don't and seldom lost a battle of strategy or wit. I also sought to better myself. It was on a journey to Greece where I was to learn the art of oration that pirates seized my ship and captured me. When I, when I learned that they were holding, when they were releasing me for, 20, for only 20 silver coins, I became indignant and told them that I was at least worth double. I also told them that I would be after my release. I would return and kill kill them all. The promise I kept by bringing them the room for public execution. From 58 B.C. to 52 B.C., I fought and conquered most of Europe. I was adored by the Roman people, respected by my soldiers, and hated by the Roman Senate. I was a skilled lawyer, politician, leader, and soldier. And now, I was ruler of Rome. Rome, which had been a republic since 509 BC, was now abandoning republican rule. The people had voted to make me dictator for life. The Senate was apoplectic about this development. Even my closest friends could not allow destruction of, Roman, of the Roman Senate of Roman democracy. On March 15th, 15th, as I entered the Roman Senate, my conspirators gathered around me, stabbing me to death, stabbing me till I lay dead on the Senate floor. They thought, unfortunately for my conspirators, they would be hunted down either being exiled or executed by my, by my, by my successor, Caesar Augustus. They thought my conspirators were, th thought they were ridding themselves of a, a dictator, but in reality, they were actually ushering in the rise of the Roman Empire. Rome would be ruled by an emperor for the next 1,480 years.
an exhaustive essay about the person, and then um, also writing a, a first-person narrative that they're going to share with you this evening. So um, I hope everybody got a program, and I hope you're ready to be entertained and enlightened, because I always learn something at Mason History. Oh, I know I do. So, are you guys ready?
Each because of each man's commission of war broke, and the civil war broke out between the two factions of Gaius Marius and Sola. Gaius Marius won the war, but died in 86 BCE. His close friends remained in power, though, which proved fortunate for me. I was 15 years old, high priest of Jupiter, and head of my household. This was an excellent position to begin my launch into power. Unfortunately, Sola returned to Rome and murdered my friends who were in power. I lost my land, my money, my houses, and almost my life. Had it not been for an old alliance between my mother and Sola, I would have been killed. I was exiled for seven years. The only thing I could do was join an army, so I did. I was already a well-trained soldier in a cell without leadership and training. I was, I was rash, yet, yet clever, and seldom lost a battle of strategy or wit. I, was, I also sought to better myself. It was on a journey to Greece where I was to learn the art of oration that pirates seized my ship and captured me. When I learned that they were only asking 20 silver coins for my release, I became indignant and told them that I was that I was at least worth double. I also told them that I would be return after my release and kill them all. I promised I kept by bringing them to Rome for public execution. From 58 BC to 52 BC, I fought and conquered most of Europe. I was adored by the Roman people, respected by my soldiers, and hated by the Roman Senate. I was a skilled lawyer, politician, leader, and soldier, and now I was ruler of Rome. Rome, which had been a republic since 509 BC, was now abandoning Republican rule. The, the people had voted to make me ruler from February 14th, 44 BC. The, the Senate was apoplectic about this development. Even my closest friends could not allow the destruction of Roman democracy. On, on March 15th, as I entered the Senate, my conspirators gathered around me, stabbed me repeatedly until I lay dead on the Senate floor. Unfortunately for my conspirators, they, they thought they would be hunting down my wife, successor, Caesar Augustus, either being exiled or executed. They thought they were bringing themselves to Dictator, but in reality, they, they were ushering in the rise of the Roman Empire. Rome would be ruled for, by an emperor for the next 1,480 years. So we're having Grandma ninety-third birthday. It doesn't matter. It's just any device as works. Louis and Bill, Aunt Jen are all here. Grandma, Mom, Hunter, and Trevor at the Magnolia House. They've got their pies now and pretty quiet. Nobody wants to talk when they're eating pie. Because if you would do that, then I'm going to have a bit down on the downside. Oh, 
what you're doing, though, is you're, you're not going to have anywhere.